The new teacher, Professor Moody, shows Harry and the other students one of the most dangerous spells. Stay tuned to see what happens and learn some advanced British English phrases and expressions you can use in your next conversation. First, we'll watch part of the clip with subtitles. Alistair Moody. Ex Auror. Ministry malcontent. And your new defense against the dark arts teacher. I am here because Dumbledore asked me. End of story. Goodbye. The end. Any questions? When it comes to the dark arts, I believe in a practical approach. But first, which of you can tell me how many unforgivable curses there are? Three, sir. And they are so named? Because they are unforgivable. The use of any one of them will. We'll earn you a one-way ticket to Azkaban. Correct. Now, the minister says you're too young to see what these curses do. I say different. You need to know what you're up against. You need to be prepared. You need to find another place to put your chewing gum besides the underside of your desk, Mr. Finnegan. Oh, no way. The old codger can see at the back of his head. Now, let's break down the English and stay tuned to watch the rest of the clip. Alistair Moody. Ex aura ministry malcontent. When someone uses the prefix ex, they mean it's something that used to be but is not anymore. Like ex-husband means he used to be your husband but isn't now. Or ex-teacher means you used to be a teacher but now you're not. So Mad-Eye is introducing himself and talking about his own job history here. He's an ex orer or he used to be an orer but isn't anymore. An orer is a special kind of wizard or witch who fights against the dark arts and dark wizards. In the non on magic world or muggle world, the equivalent might be a police officer or a cop. When he says malcontent, he means he's unhappy or dissatisfied. In this case, he's specifically unhappy about a ministry. You can use this when you're talking about anything that makes you unhappy, like I'm malcontent with my parents right now. In other words, I'm dissatisfied with my parents. Ex aura ministry malcontent and your new defense against the dark arts teacher. Defense is protection against something harmful or dangerous. For instance, she came to his defense when the boss started yelling at him. It's also used a lot in sports, defense versus offense. Defense is when you're trying to stop the other side from scoring, and the opposite is offense, when you are trying to score. And dark arts is used to talk about evil and harmful spells and magical practices. A synonym is dark magic. So, defense against the dark arts is a subject taught at Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry, where students learn how to protect themselves from dangerous magical creatures and spells. In other words, Harry and his classmates are learning how to fight against bad or evil magic in this class. And your new defense against the dark arts teacher. I am here because Dumbledore asked me. End of story. Goodbye. The end. Any questions? When someone says end of story, they mean that the discussion is over and there's nothing more to say about it. It's a pretty informal and direct way to end a conversation. And you might hear it when someone feels very strongly about their opinion or decision and it's final. For instance, your parents might say, you're not going to that party, end of story. Meaning we're not gonna talk about it anymore. You're not going. So here, Moody doesn't want his students asking him questions about why he's here teaching at Hogwarts. So he ends the discussion before it even starts by saying, end of story. I'm here because Dumbledore asked me, end of story, goodbye, the end. Any questions? When it comes to the dark arts, I believe in a practical approach. Practical means useful and sensible, like these comfortable shoes are very practical. When applied to the context of learning or professional experience, we can also use the similar expression hands-on. For example, I have hands-on experience managing different departments, so I have practical experience managing departments. And approach means a way of dealing with something, like let's use the simple approach. So a practical approach means a way of doing something that is realistic, useful, and focused on real life situations. It's like saying, let's do something that actually works and makes sense, rather than just talking about it or doing something that doesn't really help. 
For instance, at work, I use the practical approach to solve my problems. So here, Moody is saying instead of just talking about the dark arts and using textbooks to learn about them, which would be known as the theoretical approach, he wants the students to learn with real world experiences. Uh oh, I wonder how this class is going to end. When it comes to the dark arts, I believe in a practical approach. But first, which of you can tell me how many unforgivable curses there are? Three, sir. When someone says something is unforgivable, they mean it cannot be forgiven. For instance, if you killed someone, that could be unforgivable. The prefix here is un, which means not, like unwelcome means not welcome, or unfriendly, which means not friendly. In the muggle, or normal non-wizard world, curse is a synonym for bad word, cuss word, or profanity. I'm not going to give any examples, I'm sure you can think of a few. But we're in the wizarding world, so curse is a spell or enchantment that causes harm or misfortune to others. So unforgivable curses refers to some extremely powerful and dangerous spells that are considered unforgivable because they cause great harm, suffering, or even death to the person they are cast upon. Curses and evil are a huge theme in Harry Potter and most fictional and fantasy movies and TV shows, so it's important to understand what they are. But just like how the words muggles, Azkaban, and unforgivable curses make sense in the wizarding world, slang expressions and idioms in the real world have their own set of words that really only make sense for a particular context. For instance, when you're watching this Friends clip with YouTube subtitles, we see the phrase, come on. If we tried googling come on to see what it means, we'd get the the basic definition, start to arrive or happen, which is not what this means at all in this clip. If we watch that same clip on FluentU, we can click directly on come on to see the correct definition for this context, an expression used to encourage or convince someone to do or say something. Plus, not only do you get context specific definitions, you can also watch real world example videos to understand other ways the same word or phrase is used. Come on. I don't believe that. What's the deal? We gotta pay for our own drinks? That's lame. Come on! On Fluent You, you learn by watching thousands of clips from movies, TV shows, and TED Talks. Plus, after each video, you can take a personalized quiz with speaking questions so you can have hands-on experience by practicing what you've just learned. If all of this is important to you, I recommend signing up for a free two-week trial in the link in the description. And Fluent You is currently having a sale, so now's a great time to check it out. First, which of you can tell me? How many unforgivable curses there are? Three, sir. And they are so named? Because they are unforgivable. When Moody says, and they're so named, it's basically another way to ask, why is this the name for these curses? So for instance, in America, we'd ask, why are they called unforgivable curses? Or to be even shorter, why are they named that? But in British English, you'd say, and they're so named? It works for both plural and singular words. For instance, they call it American football, and it's so named? You are asking why they call it American football. This is used only when speaking. So if you're writing an email or text, make sure to write out the full question. So here, Moody is asking his students why these spells are called unforgivable curses. I bet Hermione has the answer. And they are so named? Because they are unforgivable. The use of any one of them will we'll earn you a one-way ticket to Azkaban, correct? One-way ticket literally means you buy a ticket one way and don't plan on coming back. For instance, if I was moving to London, I'd buy a one-way ticket to London since I don't plan on coming back to the US. If you plan to return, then you need to get a two-way ticket or a round-trip ticket. But one-way ticket can also be used as a metaphor, which means there's no coming back from something. So we're not literally talking about a ticket. For instance, signing divorce papers is a one-way ticket to being single, meaning you can't go back and change your mind and become married again. Azkaban is the prison of the wizarding world, known for its terrible conditions and scary guards called the Dementors. So Moody uses one one-way ticket to Azkaban to emphasize how serious the situation is, instead of just saying going to prison. So using these spells is basically a life sentence to jail. The use of any one of them will we'll earn you a one-way ticket to Azkaban, correct? Now the minister says you're too young to see what these curses do. I say different! 
I say is used to emphasize the speaker's own opinion, while different shows that their opinion is not the same as the one said before. I say different is a way of expressing disagreement with someone's opinion or statement. For instance, he says Paris is better than London, but I say different. Or in this case, Moody is saying that the government thinks the students at Hogwarts are too young to see how these unforgivable curses work. But Moody disagrees. He thinks they need to see how they work. You can use I say anytime you'd like to emphasize your own opinion. Here's another example. I say we should call our customers to wish them happy holidays. Don't forget to hit that like button if you're enjoying today's video. And don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on any upcoming videos like Learn English with Star Wars. Now the minister says you're too young to see what these curses do. I say different. You need to know what you're up against. You need to be prepared. When you're up against something, it literally means you are leaning or pressed on something, like the police officer held the suspect up against the car. But in this context, it means confronting or facing something difficult. For instance, I was up against Ashley for the new promotion at work. Or, the Avengers were up against Thanos to save the galaxy. And prepared means being ready to handle a situation, like I'm prepared for class today. So Moody thinks it's important that the students see these unforgivable curses so they can understand what they're up against or facing and be better prepared to defend themselves. You need to know what they're up against. You need to be prepared. You need to find another place to put your chewing gum besides the underside of your desk, Mr. Finnegan. So this part is hilarious because the students don't know that Moody has a magical eye that can see out the back of his head. So Moody sees the student Seamus Finnegan take his chewing or bubblegum, a type of candy that you chew but don't swallow, and put it on the underside or bottom part of the desk. Something pretty common, unfortunately. Chewing gum comes in a ton of different flavors, but usually the most popular flavor is mint, so you can chew it and it makes your breath smell good. And it's pretty rude to put the gum you've already chewed underneath your desk because the next person who sits there might accidentally touch it. Yuck! That's why Moody is telling Seamus to find another place besides the desk, which means in addition to or apart from. Preferably the garbage can. You need to find another place to put your chewing gum besides the underside of your desk, Mr. Finnegan! Oh, no way. The old codger can see at the back of his head. Codger is a British slang term often used to describe an elderly or old man who may be odd or a bit grumpy. You need to be careful who you say this to and what tone you're using because it could be seen as disrespectful or rude. For instance, if you have a great relationship with your grandpa and he comes to your house wearing a crazy outfit, you might laugh and say, you crazy codger. But if you don't have a great relationship with someone or you're saying it in a serious tone, it's best to use sir for men and ma'am or madam for women. If you're finding these words and phrases helpful, make sure to download our free PDF vocab guide with all this useful information from today's video. The link is in the description. Why? The old codger can see at the back of his head. I'm here across classrooms! So, which cars shall we see first? Shall is an old-fashioned way of saying will or going to. It's not used as commonly in everyday language, but you'll definitely still hear it in a lot of British movies and TV shows, as well as more formal settings. For instance, shall we go to the dance? It's another way of saying, should we go to the dance? You can respond by using the short answers, yes we shall or no we shan't. So here, Moody is asking the class which unforgivable curse they want to see first. Uh-oh, this can't end well. So, which curse shall we see first? Weasley! Yes? Stand! Give us a curse. Well, my, my dad did tell me about one. Hmm? The Imperious Curse. Oh, yeah. Imperious means someone who is controlling. Like, wow, my mom is so imperious. Some synonyms that are more commonly used in everyday English are controlling, overbearing, or authoritative. So this vocabulary word is what inspired the name of one of the unforgivable curses, the imperious curse. When someone is under this curse, they lose control of their actions and are forced to obey the commands of the person who cast or put the spell on them. Give us a curse. Well, my, my dad did tell me about one, hmm? the Imperious Curse. Oh, yeah, your father would know all about that. 
gave the ministry quite a bit of grief a few years ago. Quite means to a certain or fairly significant extent or degree. So it's not a high degree, like very or really, but it's still used for intensifying. For example, her children are still quite young. Her children are eight or nine years old. Her children are very young. Her children are three or four years old. Some synonyms for quite are fairly, somewhat, or slightly. A bit means a small piece, part, or quantity of something. Like, give the duck a bit of your bread. When you put it all together, quite a bit means a lot. Like, I spend quite a bit of money on this car. So if we put it all together, quite a bit of grief means that someone is experiencing a lot of trouble, sadness, or emotional pain. For instance, my kids gave me quite a bit of grief when they were teenagers, so they caused me some trouble. There's another common expression in English using the word grief, good grief. It's a way to express how surprised you are, usually in a negative way, like good grief, he's dropped the cake. Here, Moody is saying that the imperious curse caused a lot of grief or trouble for the government a few years ago. And Ron's dad would know because he works for the government. Gave the ministry quite a bit of grief a few years ago. Perhaps this will show you why. Hello. Oh, little beauty. Gorgio. Imperio! Beauty is used to describe something or someone as visually pleasing or impressive. Like, wow, my girlfriend is a beauty. Now, most of us wouldn't call an insect or a bug a beauty, but Moody is a bit different. He then uses the spell Engorgio, which is technically a made-up word used in the wizarding world to make something bigger. This spell comes from the English word engorge, which means to fill something with fluid, causing it to swell up or get larger. Then he ends this clip by putting the insect under the imperious curse, meaning it is forced to do everything that Moody wants it to. Let's see what happens next. Oh, little beauty. Engorge you. Imperio! <laughs> No, Barney! It's completely harmless! <laughs> if she bites, she's lethal. <laughs> completely means totally, and harmless means something that cannot cause any harm or damage. So when you put completely in front of harmless, you're just emphasizing how harmless it is. For instance, if we wanted to emphasize how clean your room is, you'd say it's completely clean. Or if you wanted to tell people that your pit bull isn't dangerous, you'd say, don't worry, she's completely harmless. The suffix less means without. So friendless means without friends or fearless means without fear. Lethal, on the other hand, means something that can cause death or serious harm. For instance, guns are lethal. It's funny that Moody says two opposite words right Right after each other because they contradict one another and don't really make sense. Is the insect completely harmless or is it lethal? I guess we'll find out. No more it's completely harmless. <laughs> if she bites, she's lethal. <laughs> what are you laughing at? <laughs> laughing at another person means they are making fun of or mocking them. Like when Chandler mocked Monica during a big discussion that they had. The person being laughed at might feel embarrassed or uncomfortable in this situation. Contrary to laughing with, which means enjoying a joke or humorous moment together with the person. Take a look at the difference. I was laughing at Joe. This sounds mean because you're making fun of Joe. I was laughing with Joe. This shows that you and Joe were enjoying a joke together. So here, Moody asks Malfoy what he's laughing at. And Malfoy was laughing at someone being scared of the insect, which wasn't very nice. So Moody put the insect on him as punishment. <laughs> what are you laughing at? <laughs> now let's test your knowledge and watch the clip without subtitles. Alistair Moody. Ex order. Ministry malcontent. And your new defense against the dark arts teacher. I am here because Dumbledore asked me. End of story. Goodbye. The end. Any questions? 
when it comes to the dark arts. I believe in a practical approach. But first, which of you can tell me how many unforgivable curses there are? Three, sir. And they are so named? Because they are unforgivable. The use of any one of them will. We'll earn you a one-way ticket to Azkaban, correct? Now, the minister says you're too young to see what these curses do. I say different. You need to know what they're up against. You need to be prepared. You need to find another place to put your chewing gum besides the underside of your desk, Mr. Finnegan. Oh, no way. The old codger can see at the back of his head. And here across classrooms. So, which curse shall we see first? Weasley! Yes. Stand. Give us a curse. Well, my, my dad did tell me about one. Hmm. The imperious curse. Oh, yeah. Your father would know all about that. Gave the ministry quite a bit of grief a few years ago. Perhaps this will show you why. Hello. Oh, little beauty. Gorgio. Imperio! Uh. <laughs> Don't worry, it's completely harmless. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> if she bites, she's lethal. <laughs> <laughs> what are you laughing at? Check out this next video to learn some more advanced English with my favorite snarky goth, Wednesday Adams. Learn what those two words mean, plus many more in this video of her first day of school. I'll see you over there.